I'm Dr. Helen Ramirez, and this is my newly published book, The Miniature World of Ramona Robinson. I'd like to read a little bit of it to you so that you can get to know the main character, Ramona Robinson. Ramona woke to the smell of crisping bacon, fried eggs, and hot grits. She knew that her grandmother would be calling her to come downstairs soon. The covers felt so warm and cozy as Ramona stretched her arms above her head. She didn't want to get up and go to school today. Why couldn't it be Saturday? Curly dark ringlets fell in front of her bright sky blue eyes. She wiped her hair away lazily as she continued to luxuriate beneath the warm covers. Ramona glanced toward the window. Bright beams of sunlight shone through the white antique eyelet curtains that hung before hundred-year-old wavy glass window panes. Little bits of frost made intricate patterns on the edges and corners of the windows. Jack Frost had been to visit last night, she mused. It would be a cold walk to school. Ramona loved to see the sunlight dance on tiny dust particles that floated here and there in the cool morning air of her bedroom. Her grandmother always kept the house a little bit cool at night. Ramona slept much better that way. She could almost see the puff of air turn to frost as she breathed out heavily. Maybe today would be a good day, she reassured herself. So many days recently had not been good. Ramona held out hope that this day would be different. Ramona, time to get up, called her grandmother. I'll be down in a minute answered Ramona. She cuddled back under the covers that felt so comforting and warm on her small frame. Ramona surveyed the room and tried to convince herself that the floor wouldn't feel like ice cubes on her feet. She spied a rather large spider crawling across the top of her nightstand. Her grandmother hated spiders and the like and always swiftly took a broom to, or shoe to them. Ramona never did. She believed that insects were just like puppies or kittens or bunnies or any other living creature and that there was no need to splatter them all over a wall. In fact, she always felt a little sad when her grandmother crushed a bug. As she watched the spider make its way toward the antique lamp, she noticed that it wasn't any ordinary type of spider. It appeared to be black at first glance, but as she took a closer look, Ramona realized that the spider was iridescent. Depending on the angle at which Ramona tilted her head and the amount of light that reflected on the spider, she saw hues of green, blue, purple, and even orange. How strange, she thought. She had seen beetles with such coloration, but never a spider. Ramona, your breakfast is getting cold, called her grandmother with an irritated tone in her voice. Ramona's about to look away and kick off the covers when out of the corner of her eye, she believed she saw the spider smile at her. She turned quickly to look at it again, but the spider had disappeared. I must be imagining things, she said to herself as she crawled out of bed. She walked tippy-toed to the bathroom as to not feel the freezing floor on the entirety of her feet. She pulled back her thick ringlets into a messy, puffy ponytail. She washed her face and then tippy-toed back to the closet. What should I wear today? Something warm, she thought to herself. I'll wear the cream cuddle, colored turtleneck sweater, a multicolored scarf, jeans, and my pink cowboy boots. That should keep me warm enough. Ramona hurried to dress before her grandmother yelled up to her again. She bounded down the stairs and plopped into a chair at the kitchen table. Her grandmother set her breakfast in front of her with a glass of orange juice and then scolded her for taking so long to come downstairs. Do I have to go to school today? Yes, Ramona, of course you do. Why wouldn't you want to go? Don't you want to see your little friends and your teacher and learn something new? asked her grandmother. I don't have any friends and school is boring, answered Ramona. Well, you have to go. What would you do all day here? You'd just be getting into mischief. I can't have you here underfoot all day. Besides, learning is important. You can't do anything in this world without an education anymore. Maybe in my day you could find a good job without an education, but not now. With all this new technology, it makes me wonder how anyone can survive anymore. No, you have to go to school and learn. That's all there is to it. Ramona listened to her grandmother lecture and then gave her a mopey look. She grumbled a little more and then agreed to go to school. After Ramona had finished her breakfast, her grandmother handed her a sack lunch and swatted her on the behind as she pushed her out the door. Now go learn something, she said to Ramona. The tap on Ramona's backside had been meant as a show of affection, at least Ramona thought it was, but it was perhaps a bit harder than it should have been. Ramona felt a little sting as she descended the porch steps. As she walked down the sidewalk that led to her school, Ramona kicked a little rock. Each time she reached the rock again, she kicked it a little further than the last time. The point was to see if she could keep it straight ahead of her without it falling off into the street. 
Finally, Ramona made the turn through the school gate that led to the grassless playground. The dirt had been packed hard from many years of pounding feet, playing jump rope, tag, and the like. Rather than playing with the other children, Ramona usually sat beneath a big oak tree. Daily, she would look up through the leaves and branches to see little spots of blue sky poking through. There is where she did her best daydreaming before the school bell rang. Sometimes she would take out her sketch pad and draw whatever came to mind. Today, she was almost to the tree when she felt a heavy blow from behind that hurled her to the ground. Ramona went face first into a mud puddle. Once she regained her senses, Ramona looked up to see two boys from her class towering over her. Their names were Brian and Brayden. They were twins and the meanest boys in school. The only way to tell the two apart was by the way each wore his fire red hair. Brian wore his spiked, while Brayden wore his parted and combed to the side. Both were rather disgusting creatures. The armpits of their shirts were always wet from perspiration, and they smelled of body odor. They had grown so fat over the summer that the striped polo-style shirts they wore didn't fully cover their bulging bellies. Pale, dimply skin peeked out in the gap between their shirts and the tight waistbands of their jeans. Ramona looked up at them, confused. What had she done to provoke them? Oops, said Brian with fake sincerity. I guess my foot got in your way. Ramona looked at Brian just in time to see a ball of snot that was coming from his right nostril turn into a bubble. It expanded and deflated each time he breathed out and in. Ramona winced. Gross, she said under her breath. Are you calling my brother gross, demanded Brayden as he put his sunburned face close to hers. Ramona could smell his rotten breath. She tried not to breathe it in. Then Brayden reached up with his bare hand to wipe snot that was oozing from both of his nostrils. He smeared it across his freckled cheek all the way to his ear. How disgusting, screeched Ramona. The words came out involuntarily, and she immediately regretted having said them when she saw the angry look on Brayden's face. You're ugly, responded Brayden. Yeah, you are, agreed Brian. You have circus hair, and whoever saw a black person with blue eyes, you're a freak of nature. Maybe we should put some mud in her eyes and turn them brown the way they should be. Let's do it. Brian and Brayden put their hands on Ramona's head and pushed her face back into the mud. Ramona took a deep breath and squeezed her eyes shut before her face was completely submerged in the puddle. Open your eyes, they demanded. Just then the bell rang. You tell on us and we'll get you, threatened Brian. They both let go of her head and ran toward the school to line up with their class. The students were led inside by the teacher. Ramona found herself outside alone and completely soaked in mud from the top of her head to the tips of her toes. She wiped the mud from her face as best she could with the sleeve of her coat. What was she going to do? She couldn't go inside and tell what had happened or Brian and Brayden might do something even worse. She couldn't go home or her grandmother would surely call the school. That would have the same effect as if Ramona had gone into school. Brian and Brayden would still get her for telling. Ramona was about to start crying when she heard a little voice near her ear. Don't fret, dear. Everything will be all right, assured the voice. Who said that? questioned a surprised Ramona. I did, said the spider Ramona had seen crawling on the nightstand in her room earlier that morning. It crawled down Ramona's sleeve. Ramona's first instinct was to scream and shake the spider off of her, but her curiosity prevented her from making that move. Am I imagining things? Did I hit my head? How are you talking to me? Ramona questioned the spider. No, you didn't hit your head. I climbed onto your backpack today to hitch a ride. I'm take, talking to you because you need someone to help you. Those boys are terrible, just terrible for doing that to you. Let's walk down to the stream and get you cleaned up a bit. The sun is shining brightly today. It should warm up nicely. We can even have a lovely picnic with your lunch and I can introduce you to some of my friends. If you're intrigued by Ramona's story and you want to hear more of it, go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Tattered Cover, or Dorrance Publishing. Happy reading, and I hope you enjoy meeting Ramona's tiny friends and having adventures with them. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.